This is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield from The Lynn Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Michael provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning into The Wealth Puzzle. This is Mike and Tana, and we're here to talk to you about all things wonderful related mm -hmm. to retirement planning. So, Tana, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Through, through so much positive feedback, we have kept with the dark background this week. <laughs> It is, it is the fall. It is it's Halloween. It's nice. Yes. It, it's, uh, you know, higher contrast. <laughs> makes me look tanner. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have wore a black shirt today. I might, I might just kind of blend into it somewhere. Well, but, I can't wait to see what you dress up as, as for Halloween. So hey, I'm excited. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, the other day we went to a, a, a church. They do a little trunk or treat Halloween thing mm -hmm. um, for the kids. It's safe environment for children to trick or treat in. And um, so I went and I actually I wore my old army uniform. And, you know, most important thing of me putting that on occasionally is to see if it still fits. You know, it's kind of like a, a sad life life test. You know? <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, I, that, right. That button on the pants was a little snug, but you know what? I got it on. Yeah. My cheerleading outfit doesn't. Yeah. That uniform from Buena doesn't yeah, fit funny. anymore. I'll tell you what. I got a couple, uh, you know. Handsome comments. I was I nice. Was I was Good. Like, you know, yeah. Was on nine. Whew. Yes. Whew. Back, in, whew. Back in there. That's whew. awesome. Anyways. Hey, uh, down to business though. Uh, you know, one of the things <laughs> that we got to get at is social security is about to make everybody rich in January. <laughs> hot dog, hot dog, hot not dog. rich, but social. Well, pff, <laughs> not, not Tatana standard rich, <laughs> but social security is having a cost of living adjustment in mm -hmm. January that is just shy of 6%. It's 5.9%. Mm -hmm. This will, in fact, be the biggest cost of living adjustment we've seen in almost 40 right. years. It's pretty insane in and of itself. Now, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because on one level, you say, oh, my gosh, this is so awesome. I'm mm -hmm. going to get an extra. We were Tan and I were talking about, we think the average person will probably see somewhere between $50 and $100 more a month mm -hmm. on their Social Security check. So that's good. Um, this morning I was uh, at the gas station getting some gas and I walked inside and I was standing in line and someone in front of me was buying cigarettes. And I was shocked to hear the price. It was nine something when they were checking out. I guess the good news is, is I'm not actively buying cigarettes. So I right. don't know the pricing of them. I, the last time I bought a pack when I was 18, <laughs> it's probably about four and a quarter. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway the uh but i was surprised by that i was like holy cow i don't know if that's inflation or if that's what cigarettes cost mm -hmm. i don't know the good news is is that person should be able to buy another five to ten packs a month <laughs> that's not good um with their social security increase <laughs> I, i'm thinking like an extra tank of gas or something well, but not, not real it's, it's what it equates to in your pocket and so whether that's true gas or cigarettes we all have priorities everyone's got priorities you yeah. know you go over to smart and final uh, you know, get yourself some, uh, you have to buy untrimmed tri-tip. You can't buy the trim stuff. It's so expensive now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like $13 a pound these days. So get some untrimmed tri-tips, maybe, <laughs> maybe seven, eight bucks a pound. So you get like a three pounder maybe. Yeah. Know. But if it's untrimmed, don't you pay for the fat then? Or do like people like the fat? Cause well, it gives see, it more flavor. See, I like the yeah. fat because okay. of the flavor. So yep. what I like to do is I like to cook down my tri-tips. I put mm -hmm. them in like one of those little, like, uh, you know, like cooking deals and cover it in foil and cook right. it all day. And the fat makes it umu yummy. Yeah. Yummy. Good point. So, okay. Anyways, back to business. Social security is going up. This is a positive. This is yes. an increase. If you look at it from that level, if I look at it from a fiscally responsible governmental level, it's a little interesting, right? Um, Tana, who pays for this social security cost of living adjustment? Me, you, everyone. Right. Us, right? So, so there's no infinite <laughs> right. amount of magic money in the world, right? right? The only way that we get to give these, give social security recipients an increase mm -hmm is well guess what the tax bill goes up the liability bill goes up somebody's got to pay for right. this stuff so 
that's one of the cause and effects that's we'll say kind of interesting right like nah, it's a little bittersweet when you think about the fiscal challenges our country is having mm -hmm. um so you know social security is going up someone's got to pay for it kind of a thing and it is what it is but in and of itself a lot of people that we know that we communicate with that we work with because of the favorable tax aspect of social security mm -hmm. generally speaking most people on social security aren't paying any tax if maybe a little bit mm -hmm. um, because remember most people can collect all of their social security and because of all the fun rules you take half mm -hmm. of it you add it up and look at that tax bracket blah 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 they could almost pretty much take out all of their standard deduction out of a fully taxable retirement account. So if you're a married right. couple, that could be like 27,000. Mm -hmm. So let's say two people are getting 50,000 from social security. They could then go pull 27,000 out of that IRA, that 401k, that money that's never been taxed, that is taxed mm -hmm. a whole. And they're probably collecting somewhere around 70, $80,000 a year, completely tax-free federally and stately. Mm -hmm. Stately. I don't know. Stately it sounds fancy. <laughs> The, um, so anyways, it, it, it really is interesting. Obviously this has an impact on stuff. Um, one of the, one of the other things that will go up Tana is Medicare, mm -hmm. right? So, right. We all get excited about our social security going up, but then our Medicare goes up too. And a Medicare gets taken mm -hmm. out of our social security. So do, do we know anything about that just yet? Well, they're just projecting maybe a five to $10 increase at this point, but they have not published anything official. Okay, but that's not too bad mm -hmm. because there's been years there's there's a weird law. It's called hold harmless in social security mm -hmm. that you can't increase Medicare in the years that there was no social security cost of living adjustment. Right. And in the last decade, there's been like three years with no cost of living adjustment on social security. So Medicare didn't go up in those years. So what they did in the following years is they went up a lot. Mm -hmm. Like like we go back, I don't know, don't hold me to this, but like 10 years ago, social security was like one hundred and four dollars. Mm -hmm. And then like the following year, it was like 130 for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, it really bumped up. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, did we just have a 30% cost of living adjustment? <laughs> and the answer is no. It's some funky rules that exist in Social Security. Mm -hmm. That's the other irony, I guess, that we could throw onto the, the, the pot, of, pot of fun here. And that is, why do we even have such a large cost of living adjustment this year, Tana? Any Any ideas? I would say yeah. inflation. Ooh, that's that was the only idea. So you, okay. you nailed it. You didn't sell it though. I felt like that was oh, a very sorry. monotone. I, answer I know. Here. I was just like inflation. I guess there's inflation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Next time. So it's a little more punch. Right? So so that's kind of that double-edged sword. Yes, your social security goes up. Yeah. But guess what? The cost of your yeah. cigarettes went up too. Um, so everything is more expensive. Um the government keeps swearsying that that's what's called trans transitory. It's all temporary, even though now they're starting to say, gosh, it's really persistent temporary insurance <laughs> inflation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we'll see. I'm, I'm hard pressed to think this uh, inflation is going anywhere for a while. We can waste your time with some charts some other day, but good news. It's going up. Here, let me plop up the screen share. We'll show up a couple things that I was looking at that we were looking at. Ooh, click share blank. So here's this one. This is what I was talking about. So 2022, we've got that 5.9% increase in social security. Um, the other thing though, that that's a fun fact, this is actually an article from the, the King Dingling. I think they would call him. What's his name? What's his name? Where is he? Steve Goss. He's the guy in charge of social security. So <laughs> let's all write him some mean cards. Jeez Louise, who planned this out? But what's interesting is down here, and those for those folks that are making a decent amount of money, remember social security taxation, not social security, not it being taxed, but when you are working, when you are younger, when you are Tana's age and still a working stiff, how much of your income is subject to social security taxation? Mm. And that number, because of all the inflation, also increased quite a bit. It's up right. almost $10,000. It's going to be 147000 from... It was like 138 last year. And so it's interesting because someone has to pick up the slack. Right. And what just happened is, is if you have some friends, you know, in town who are half gainfully employed and making a decent amount of money here, mm -hmm. they're actually going to see a, a nice amount of more tax that they get to pay. Right. Which is very kind and patriotic of them to make sure that there's more money to cover your cost of living adjustment. Um, so things change. Woohoo.
You know, it's interesting. I saw this article too. It was how advisors are positioning client portfolios for inflation. See, all of these conversations, they're all <laughs> they're all coming back at each other, right? Social security seems fun and exciting, but it's because of inflation. It's going to make social security taxation on working stiffs like me and Tana mm -hmm. more. And so, you know, one person wins, one person loses. Some people are in between, you know. And we had touched on this last week. Remember that article you showed me, Tana? That was um it was really about inflation. And mm -hmm. what the guy was, was saying in that article was number one, a lot of people don't feel like they have enough assets to mm -hmm. retire, which is problematic, right? Jeez. How much caffeine did I have? I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> grinding this out. <sighs> now it's cause I set a goal of, of making these shorter for everybody. And so I figure if I just talk faster, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just really hammer you, um, with information. But, but kind of going back to the theme is all of these things are working together, right? People don't have enough money saved. Inflation is, is starting to have a weird cause and effect in different areas. Good for Social Security recipients, bad for taxpayers, you, you know, all of this stuff. And last week in the article, what we touched on was inflation is a problem. And the person's argument in the article that we were looking at last week was, hey, you know what? People are living longer. People don't have enough money saved. People are in a bad spot. And so, Tana, you should turn off your phone during our... our That's you, not me. Oh, was that you? I yeah. Know. I don't know. <laughs> the um, People need to probably have a little more equity exposure than they're originally accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And that's because on top of inflation being problematic for your portfolio, it's bad for everything else. If you got money sitting in cash, inflation bad. If you got money in bonds, inflation bad. If you mm -hmm. got money in CDs, inflation bad. Where right. do you put money? In you the know, stock market, estate, yeah. In the stock market and in real estate. But yeah. real estate's had, an, had a, a weird COVID phenomenon that it mm -hmm. went up like a missile before the inflation even was there. Right. So now real estate's not even a play. So it's the stock market. So here's another article, how advisors are positioning portfolios. Sounds really fancy. And what I thought was interesting is that instead of CDs and money market, oh my gosh, did they copy our show last <laughs> week and write this article? I think they did. Yeah. Are you sharing my <laughs> Carry thought a little bit on Pfizer the side. Pfizer magazine. Instead of CDs and money markets, we like dividend stocks. <sighs> yeah, well, that kind of plays into exactly what I said. Right? Is what mm -hmm. happens is inflation has a very unique cause and effect, and that mm -hmm. it's actually good for the stock market because where else are you going to put your money? Well, guess what? Smart people realize that hedge funds realize that mm -hmm. and they have to buy investments. Now, what they're saying is they're going to lean more towards value stocks. So that could be a, an underlying play inside of your stock portfolio. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to just buy growth stocks. Maybe you don't want to just own Tesla. Maybe what you want to do is buy stable, boring Procter mm -hmm. and Gabble. General Johnson Mills, and Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. And yeah. Johnson mm -hmm. stocks. You know, Good Johnson point. and Johnson used to be the one you and I would talk about is like this very <laughs> stable dividend value stock because it always was because yeah. you know they would just sell that cancer powder or whatever <laughs> you know stuff <laughs> that baby powder gives everyone cancer that's, oh, that's really all they're known for as i recall um but ever since they got into the vaccine game they you know it just seems yeah. less in my mind like this uh you know stable boring right. stock yeah good point so in, I just thought that was an interesting re, re kind of affirmation of what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. What was even more enjoyable is I found this other article. You'll notice on this website that there are more ads than article. <laughs> um, we, <laughs> it's true. It's hard to even get to the. Like, this, is, this is what happens when you, when you don't just get get into your paid for content. All right. Use the free content. They try to get you like look at these things. They scroll Distracting. up and down the page. You know <laughs> they're like, hey Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's the blend moral messages definitely the, um, but i thought this was a good article too you know and it states with the lowest retirement savings per capita kind of plays into what we were saying mm -hmm. not all of us have the financial resources that tana has not all of us <laughs> will be able to live a life of vacationing in the caribbean on private jets as tana hey i'm probably gonna be working does. in a long time myself what i am i think so uh, Tana well, at least I'm planning on it. Show is I was giving her some life <laughs> advice and I told her that she needs to find a, a financial planning firm to purchase. <laughs> and I might know of one. <laughs> no, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> what? 
No, what? we're a good team. I want to be like the godfather <laughs> around here. You know, you can have like a, a physical painting of me at the office <laughs> where, where people just ask if I'm still if yeah, I'm I just dead or alive at that point. Stare at the painting and ask yes. you questions. No, he's, he's around. <laughs> he's in his think tank. Oh, Anyways, dear. this article goes through the 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 10, you know, lowest saving states. But you know what's interesting about it, Tana? Um, you have family in Utah, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kid goes to school there. I got siblings in Utah. So mm -hmm. my wife has siblings in Utah. So Utah was rated number 10. And their average retirement balance is about $300,000. Okay. But what was interesting past that when you read this article is it said the state has the seventh lowest average net worth hmm. per capita of about 470000 But see, so normally what the, I take that away is saying, because unfortunately we don't have the definition of how they're defining a retirement balance. You know, normally that's 401ks, IRAs, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but if you got three hundred grand in your retirement accounts and, and your net worth four seventy, the difference is probably equity in real estate. Mm -hmm. But still, when you get to that theme, let's say you're retiring. The national average Social Security has crept up and hot dog, it's going up another 6%. So thank you for that. But the national average Social Security is something under $1,700 a month. So you've got $1,700 a month coming in and mm -hmm. you've got three hundred grand in cash assets. Let's just be like overly simple. This is not a retirement plan. This is not investment advice. Right. Let's just play with like a 5% drawdown rule. You know, just as kind of simple math. So you're getting seventeen hundred a month. You could probably pull out, you know, maybe fifteen thousand dollars a year out of your retirement savings based on what you have there. Uh, divide that number by twelve. You know, not a ton of money. Add your seventeen to that number. Maybe on a good day in Utah, you're making yeah. three grand a month. It's not enough. Now you don't have to pay any tax on it, so that's good. So it really is three grand. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're married. Well, then you'd have two social security. So that complicates it. So you're not married. You're not married. We're back to single and ready to mingle. <laughs> and oh, is that true? I don't know. Um, so you've got about $3,000 a month of income mm -hmm. and you've got to pay either a mortgage. You well, hopefully you don't have rent. a mortgage because that yeah. would be yeah. eat most of it up. <laughs> Except this is America, Tana. I know, um, but you should be done paying off a home by then. You maybe have health insurance. Maybe you want to drive a car, um, gas. Well, I was going to say gas, but everyone went, ran out a year ago and bought electric cars uh, is my understanding. Um, so nobody has gas vehicles. So we don't have to worry about buying gas, uh, but you got to pay for electricity. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I, I have to admit, you know, with inflation, truly somewhere, probably the government says 5%, but let's say in the last 12 months, real inflation is more like 10%, nine mm -hmm. or 10%. I mean, hell, the price of gas is up exponentially, even though you don't use it anymore. Um, but food, mm -hmm. that, that's my frustration with, with inflation measures, right? They, they drop out all of the things that people actually use. Right. Housing, food, and fuel prices. Yeah, like, good what? point. Those are the only things I can really even think about when I close my eyes and think about spending money. <laughs> like, oh, pff, don't worry about that. Just um, the necessities. But it kind of really um, does exasperate the point. And the point mm -hmm. is, what do me and Tana do? We do retirement income planning. Our goal is to meet with people, you know, when they're kind of getting into the fourth quarter of the game, when they're, you mm -hmm. know, three to five years out from retirement or they're approaching retirement to help strategize. What are the things that you need to be doing to create an income plan? How do you maximize social security? How do you maximize your cash assets? How should the money be properly invested for growth and mm -hmm. income? Because yeah, good point. Well, isn't that kind of a failure? Yeah. Like, so many yeah. people walk in and be like, I don't know. I retired. I thought I needed to put it all on conservative stuff. Well, they're concerned of what exactly they are invested in and not how to invest it. So right. That... What's, the, what's the purpose of it? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and that is, and that that's a good point, Tana. That's so short-sighted for a lot of people. They're so busy looking at the actual mm -hmm. investment. They're right. not looking at the purpose of it. And that is when you build a big picture income plan and you understand where cash flow needs to come from, that very quickly dictates the nature of the investments you should own. Mm -hmm. You know, if you needed all of your money tomorrow, guess what? You shouldn't be in the stock market. Right. But as Tana and I build cash flow income plans for people, we say, what are the buckets of money that we don't need for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 mm -hmm. years? And, and we look out across that spectrum. And those are the monies that we keep in equities and in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Because remember what our job is, right? Our job is to plan in case you accidentally live too long. Mm-hmm. 
right? You know, most people come in here and they're rather morbid and they say, well, I'm not going to live forever. I should spend my money or I should take my social security early because I'm not going to live forever or something like that. But I you'd just, be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. Yeah. I, I share a story back in the pre-COVID world when I could do seminars and we used to do social security seminars back, back then when things were black and white, we knew what we were doing. Um, and I used to show the story that Gosh, even going back further in pre-COVID days, I remember sitting downtown in Ventura on this bench uh, in front of the Lure Fish House on California mm -hmm. Street. And I'm talking to this old guy. And the old guy, you know, I'm getting rusty on my story because I don't share it anymore. But he was late 80s. And at the time when I did a lot of social security seminars, I really had nothing else to talk about with strangers. <laughs> and so anytime I had to get it. What? It's true. Sorry. That's... What, what do you and I talk about offline, Tana? It's true. Social security. That's it's about true. It. Yeah. <laughs> but so we're talking about what I do. And we're talking about social security. And he said to me, you know, it's funny. I'm one of those people that I took it as soon as mm -hmm. I could because I never thought I'd be sitting here today. Right. And you think, crud, that's that's really what planning is about. It's if you die prematurely, that is totally unfortunate and that's a bummer. And, you know, it is what it is. But there's something more tragic. And that is if you live so long mm -hmm. without effective planning, there becomes a point in your life where guess what? Maybe you don't have enough money, especially it looks like if you live in Utah. And then all of right. a sudden what happens? Is you you relying on the government to take care of you? Is that gonna happen? Are well, and especially to take care of you. With the survivor benefit, you know, you really need to bolster up at least the higher earner so that whoever does live the longest yeah. has something substantial. But that's what planning's about. And most people don't do that planning. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I don't think Utah has the um do they have the state lottery? Do they have Powerball there? Hmm. <laughs> no because, idea <laughs> well that, that, but that even plays into this even further that if they don't even have access to the lottery how the hell is anyone going to retire oh gosh that's not a good place to look for yeah. retirement it's just one scenario jeez the odds are totally against you the odds are ever in your favor <laughs> like the hunger games maybe that's what we need we need a national hunger games and whoever wins <laughs> it, it's like winning the lottery <laughs> Oh, I probably wouldn't do well on that. I don't, I don't sleep well outside of my bed. So <laughs> laying in the dirt somewhere on a cold night would does not look fun. Would not go well for me. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're off the rails. What did we learn from this show today, Tana? Anything mm. good? Yeah, I think we learned a lot. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> thank you for that positive affirmation. <laughs> right. With our day. So, hey, good news though. Remember social security is going up. Like I said, you know, I can kind of play that in different ways. But the good news is, at mm -hmm. least on a visual sense, you are going to get a little bump in your income. If you're not on Social Security and you're already the age of 62, guess what? You get it also. It's mm -hmm. getting factored into your numbers. So even if you're not quite on Social Security yet, you're going to see that bump in your pay also. So hot diggity dog. Mm -hmm. If you guys got questions, if you need an income plan, if you want to talk to us about retirement income planning and all the things that Tana and I do, Give us a call, 805-500-7035. Remember, it is Medicare open enrollment, basically. And, you know, call Tana. This is what she does. She helps all of our clients get all their Medicare messes mm -hmm. in order. So give us a call, 805-500-7035. Visit our main website, thelindgroup.com. Mm -hmm. Lind is L-Y-N-D. And everyone have a great day. Toodaloo. Oh, I got to push my, my ending here. Jeez Louise, that was like, that was a solid finish. <laughs> and then I dropped the ball. Goodbye. <laughs>